Luminous blue variables LBVs are massive evolved stars that show unpredictable and sometimes dramatic variations in both their spectra and brightness. They are also known as S Doradus variables after S Doradus, one of the brightest stars of the Large Magellanic Cloud. They are extraordinarily rare with just 20 objects listed in the general catalogue of variable stars as SDOR, and a number of these are no longer considered to be LBVs. Discovery and history The LBV stars P. Cygna and Eta Carina have been known as unusual variables since the 17th century, but their true nature was not fully understood until much more recently. In 1922 John Charles Duncan published the first three variable stars ever detected in an external galaxy, variables 1, 2, and 3, in the Triangulum Galaxy M33. These were followed up by Edwin Hubble with three more in 1926, A, B, and C in M33. Then in 1929 Hubble added a list of variables detected in M31. Of these, VARA, VARB, VARC, and VAR2 in M33 and VAR19 in M31 were followed up with a detailed study by Hubble and Alan Sandage in 1953. VAR1 in M33 was excluded as being too faint and VAR3 had already been classified as a Cepheid variable. At the time they were simply described as irregular variables, although remarkable for being the brightest stars in those galaxies. The original Hubble Sandage paper contains a footnote that S. Doradus might be the same type of star, but expressed strong reservations, so the link would have to wait several decades to be confirmed. Later papers referred to these five stars as Hubble Sandage variables. In the 1970s, VAR 83 in M33 and A Andromedae, AF Andromedae equals VAR 19, VAR 15, and VAR A1 in M31 were added to the list and described by several authors as luminous blue variables, although it was not considered a formal name at the time. The spectra were found to contain lines with P Cygna profiles and were compared to Eta Carina. In 1978, Roberta Humphreys published a study of eight variables in M31 and M33 excluding VARA and referred to them as luminous blue variables, as well as making the link to the S. Doradus class of variable stars. In 1984 in a presentation at the IAU Symposium, Peter Conti formally grouped the S. Doradus variables, Hubble Sandage variables, Eta Carina, P. Cygna, and other similar stars together under the term, luminous blue variables and shortened it to LBV. He also clearly separated them from those other luminous blue stars, the wolf rayet stars. Variable star types are usually named after the first member discovered to be variable, for example delta SCT variables named after the star delta SCT. The first luminous blue variable to be identified as a variable star was P Cygna, and these stars have been referred to as P Cygna type variables. The general catalogue of variable stars decided there was a possibility of confusion with P Cygna profiles, which also occur in other types of stars, and chose the acronym SDOR for variables of the S Doradus type. The term S Doradus variable was used to describe P Cygna, S Doradus, Eta Carina, and the Hubble Sandage variables as a group in 1974. Topic: <laughs> Physical properties. LBVs are massive unstable supergiant or hypergiant stars that show a variety of spectroscopic and photometric variation, most obviously periodic outbursts and occasional much larger eruptions. In their quiescent state they are typically B-type stars, occasionally slightly hotter, with unusual emission lines. They are found in a region of the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram known as the S. Doradus instability strip, where the least luminous have a temperature around 10,000 K and a luminosity about 250,000 times the Sun, whereas the most luminous have a temperature around 25,000 K and a luminosity over a million times the Sun, making them some of the most luminous of all stars. During a normal outburst the temperature decreases to around 8,500 K for all stars, slightly hotter than the yellow hypergiants. The bolometric luminosity usually remains constant, which means that visual brightness increases somewhat by a magnitude or two. S. Doradus typifies this behavior. A few examples have been found where luminosity appears to change during an outburst, but the properties of these unusual stars are difficult to determine accurately. 
For example, agcarina may decrease in luminosity by around 30% during outbursts, and AFGL 2298 has been observed to dramatically increase its luminosity during an outburst although it isn't clear if that should be classified as a modest giant eruption. S. doradus typifies this behavior, which has been referred to as strong active cycle, and it is regarded as a key criterion for identifying a luminous blue variables. Two distinct periodicities are seen, either variations taking longer than 20 years, or less than 10 years. In some cases, the variations are much smaller, less than half a magnitude, with only small temperature reductions. These are referred to as weak active cycles and always occur on timescales of less than 10 years. Some LBVs have been observed to undergo giant eruptions with dramatically increased mass loss and luminosity, so violent that several were initially catalogued as supernovae. The outbursts mean there are usually nebulae around such stars. Eta Carina is the best studied and most luminous known example, but may not be typical. It is generally assumed that all luminous blue variables undergo one or more of these large eruptions, but they have only been observed in two or three well-studied stars and possibly a handful of supernova imposters. The two clear examples in our galaxy, P. Cygna and Eta Carina, and the possible example in the small Magellanic Cloud, HD 5980A, have not shown strong cycle variations. It is still possible that the two types of variability occur in different groups of stars. 3D simulations have shown that these outbursts may be caused by variations in helium opacity. Many luminous blue variables also show small amplitude variability with periods less than a year, which appear typical of alpha sigma variables and stochastic i.e. totally random variations. Luminous blue variables are by definition more luminous than most stars and also more massive, but within a very wide range. The most luminous are more than a million L and have masses approaching, possibly exceeding 100 M. The least luminous have luminosities around a quarter of a million L and masses as low as 10 M, although they would have been considerably more massive as main sequence stars. They all have high mass loss rates and show some enhancement of helium and nitrogen. Evolution <inaudible> 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 Because of these stars' large mass and high luminosity, their lifetime is very short only a few million years in total and much less than a million years in the LBV phase. They are rapidly evolving on observable timescales. Examples have been detected where stars with Wolf Rayet spectra WNL, OFPE, have developed to show LBV outbursts, and a handful of supernovae have been traced to likely LBV progenitors. Recent theoretical research confirms the latter scenario, where luminous blue variable stars are the final evolutionary stage of some massive stars before they explode as supernovae, for at least stars with initial masses between 20 and 25 solar masses. For more massive stars, computer simulations of their evolution suggest the luminous blue variable phase takes place during the latest phases of core hydrogen burning (LBV) with high surface temperature, the hydrogen shell burning phase (LBV) with lower surface temperature, and the earliest part of the core helium burning phase (LBV) with high surface temperature again before transitioning to the Wolf-Rayet phase, thus being analogous to the red giant and red supergiant phases of less massive stars. There appear to be two groups of LBVs, one with luminosities above 630,000 times the Sun and the other with luminosities below 400,000 times the Sun, although this is disputed in more recent research. Models have been constructed showing that the lower luminosity group are post-red supergiants with initial masses of 30 to 60 times the Sun, whereas the higher luminosity group are population 2 stars with initial masses 60 to 90 times the Sun that never developed to red supergiants, although they may become yellow hypergiants. Some models suggest that LBVs are a stage in the evolution of very massive stars required for them to shed excess mass, whereas others require that most of the mass is lost at an earlier cool supergiant stage. Normal outbursts and the stellar winds in the quiescent state are not sufficient for the required mass loss, but LBVs occasionally produce abnormally large outbursts that can be mistaken for a faint supernova and these may shed the necessary mass. Recent models all agree that the LBV stage occurs after the main sequence stage and before the hydrogen-depleted Wolf-Rayet stage, and that essentially all LBV stars will eventually explode as a supernova. LBVs apparently can explode directly as a supernova, but probably only a small fraction do. If the star does not lose enough mass before the end of the LBV stage, it may undergo a particularly powerful supernova created by pair instability. 
The latest models of stellar evolution suggest that some single stars with initial masses around 20 times that of the Sun will explode as LBVs as type 2p, type IIb, or type IB supernovae, whereas binary stars undergo much more complex evolution through envelope stripping leading to less predictable outcomes. <laughs> Supernova-like outbursts Luminous blue variable stars can undergo giant outbursts with dramatically increased mass loss and luminosity. Eta Carina is the prototypical example, with P Cygna showing one or more similar outbursts 300 to 400 years ago, but dozens have now been catalogued in external galaxies. Many of these were initially classified as supernovae but re examined because of unusual features. The nature of the outbursts and of the progenitor stars seems to be highly variable, with the outbursts most likely having several different causes. The historical Eta Carina and P Cygna outbursts, and several seen more recently in external galaxies, have lasted years or decades whereas some of the supernova imposter events have declined to normal brightness within months. Well-studied examples are SN1954 J SN1961 volts SN 1997 B Searley models of stellar evolution had predicted that although the high mass stars that produce LBVs would often or always end their lives as supernovae, the supernova explosion would not occur at the LBV stage. Prompted by the progenitor of SN 1987A being a blue supergiant, and most likely an LBV, several subsequent supernovae have been associated with LBV progenitors. The progenitor of SN 2005 GL has been shown to be an LBV apparently in outburst only a few years earlier. Progenitors of several other type IIN supernovae have been detected and were likely to have been LBVs SN 2009 IP SN 2010 JL modeling suggests that at near solar metallicity, stars with an initial mass around 20-25 m will explode as a supernova while in the LBV stage of their lives. They will be post-red supergiants with luminosities a few hundred thousand times that of the Sun. The supernova is expected to be of type II, most likely type IIb, although possibly type IIn due to episodes of enhanced mass loss that occur as an LBV and in the yellow hypergiant stage. Topic. List of LBVs The identification of LBVs requires confirmation of the characteristic spectral and photometric variations, but these stars can be quiescent for decades or centuries at which time they are indistinguishable from many other hot luminous stars. A candidate luminous blue variable CLBV can be identified relatively quickly on the basis of its spectrum or luminosity, and dozens have been catalogued in the Milky Way during recent surveys. Recent studies of dense clusters and mass spectrographic analysis of luminous stars have identified dozens of probable LBVs in the Milky Way out of a likely total population of just a few hundred, although few have been observed in enough detail to confirm the characteristic types of variability. In addition the majority of the LBVs in the Magellanic Clouds have been identified, several dozen in M31 and M33, plus a handful in other local group galaxies. Our Galaxy Eta Carina P Cygna V4650 Sagittarii FMM362 or QF362, in the Quintuplet Cluster V4998 Sagittarii LBV3 G0.120 0.048, very close to the quintuplet cluster. Ag Carina, HR Carina, V432 Carina, Ray 15 to 751. V4029 Sagittarii HD 168607. V905 Scorpii HD 160529 V1672 Aquilae AFGL 2298 W1243 in Westerlin 1 V481 Scuddy LBVG 24.73 plus 0.69 GCIRS 34W MWC 930 equals V 446 Scuddy Ray 16 137 WS 1 discovered as Wise Shell 1 MN 44 
MN48 LMC S Doratus HD 269321 equals R85 HD 269858 equals R127 HD 269006 equals R71 HD 269445 equals R99 HD 269929 equals R143 HD 269662 equals R110 HD 269700 equals R116 HD 269582 equals MWC 112 S88 HD 269216 SMC HD 5980 equals R14 HD 6884 equals R40 M31 AF Andromedae A Andromedae VAR15 VARA1 J004526.62 plus 415006 3M33 VAR2 an extremely hot star showing no variability since 1935 and hardly studied VAR83 VARB VARC GR290 Romano star an unusually hot LBV M81 I1 I2 I3 M101 V1 V2 V10 NGC 2403 V12 V22 V35 V37 V38 a number of CLBVs in the Milky Way are well known because of their extreme luminosity or unusual characteristics including Ray 17 to 96 unusual hypergiant in the gap between the two semi-stable LBV regions Pistol star, once thought to be the most luminous star in the galaxy. LBV 1806 to 20, one of the most luminous stars known. Sandulik minus 69 degrees 202, the star that exploded as SN 1987A. Cygnus OB 2 minus 12, blue hypergiant and one of the most luminous stars known. HD 80077, blue hypergiant. V1429 Aquilae with a supergiant companion, very similar to a less luminous Eta Car. V4030 Sagittarii, hypergiant surrounded by a nebula identical to the one around Sandulik minus 69 degrees 202. WR102 Ka, the Peony star, one of the most luminous stars known, and would be one of the hottest LBVs. Share 25 blue supergiant in NGC 3603 with a bipolar outflow and surrounded by a circumstellar ring. BD plus 40 degrees 4210 blue supergiant in the stellar association Cygnus OB2. Other well-known stars not currently classified as LBVs but may be transitioning into LBVs have been LBVs relatively recently or are LBVs in a stable phase include Zeta 1 Scorpii naked eye hypergiant IRC plus 10420 yellow hypergiant that has increased its temperature into the LBV range V509 Cassiopeiae equals HR8752 an unusual yellow hypergiant evolving bluewards Rho Cassiopeiae unstable yellow hypergiant suffering periodic outbursts topic see also Hypernova Topic References Topic External Links GCVS List of SDOR variable stars